Physics cat prefers to sit on something soft, like biology. Ouch. I think it's actually not very fair to biologists, but there we go. All right, so we've got charging by friction, by contact, and by induction. We're going to learn those three different methods. So what are we talking about here? Well, we've got electric charge. And remember, that's Q. And it can be transferred from one body to another. And it's actually all going to be about these electrons moving around. So we're at E with a little minus like this, you know, or we can just draw like a little, you know, minus charges moving around. Now, charge should be conserved, which means you know, if you count up all the number of uh, positives and negatives, hopefully uh, nothing has disappeared. They're supposed to be conserved. All right, let's take a look first at charging by friction. And before we go too deep into that, um, I actually want to show you just this little animation here. So again, it's by PHET, and it's uh, their balloons and static electricity one. So I started on purpose not showing you any of the charges because this is what would happen here. We have a balloon. If I hold it near the wall, nothing happens. It's, you know, pretty neutral. If I hold it near the shirt, it's pretty neutral. Nothing really happens here. And yet, have you ever tried doing this? You take a balloon and you sort of you rub it up against your shirt, for example. And now what happens? If I let it go now, notice it's actually going to go towards the shirt. I can do it again, right? So it goes towards the shirt. Why is that? And also, by the way, if I hold it near enough to the wall, it actually could stick to the wall as well. Do you notice it'll actually stick to the wall? Okay, so in charging by friction, just showing you what's going on here. Uh, well, they both start off with a neutral charge. The balloon has the same number of positives as negatives. The shirt has the same number. That's why they're both neutral. They're not attracting each other. But what happens is this. As you rub these two things are here together, as they make physical contact, they have actually friction. That's the whole idea, right? There's friction going on between them. Now, this depends on the materials. Not all materials want to do this, but like a balloon on a sweater, though, that works quite well. What happens is this then. These, if I count these electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, as you rub, maybe, uh, let's actually just say so a lot of the electrons here. So the one, two, three, four, five, let's say six of them go that way. So maybe, you know, one of them stays here, but a lot of the other ones went over here. So that means maybe we stay with like, you know, one here, but then this one has six extras, so like one, two, three, four, five, six extras. So what happens then is this one right here, let's see, what's the charge on these ones? This shirt is overall positively charged, and this balloon is now negatively charged. And that means a negative and a positive, what do they do? Oh, they attract each other. So that's why the balloon will be attracted to the shirt. If I go back to that uh, little animation, and that's what's going on. So let me show you here. So I'll take this one here. Remember, initially, look, it's neutral. It doesn't stick to anything, right? But what happens is, as I rub it, do you notice then the electrons? I'm like scooping up electrons. And now look, my balloon is overall negatively charged. And you can see on the left side, this shirt, at least close to the arm right there, is positive. So when I let it go, what happens? Of course, it's going to be attracted. Now, what I like is that what happens to the wall? You can also make a balloon stick to a wall. Why? Well, that's because locally, do you notice, uh, because this balloon is negatively charged and the wall is neutral, look as I get closer to the wall. Do you notice what's happening? The electrons in the wall are moving away. And as they move away, well, then the wall gets, you know, slightly positively charged. And that means then a positive and negative attract. So it's not very big. Do you notice if I just bring it over here, it's going to go left instead. So if I bring it really, really close, then I can make them stick as well. So that's how you can get a balloon to stick onto a wall. I like this one here. It's another one. This might explain, like, uh, like in Canada, for example, where I'm from, on a really uh, winter day, if it's really dry, for example, if you, you know, rub your feet on the ground, what are you doing? Well, you're using friction. You're getting a bunch of electrons from the floor or the carpet. And, of course, what happens is when you touch something metal like this right here, you know, then, bzzz, you know, you have a shock there. I like how they call this one here John Travoltage. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid too, this mirror goes all the way around like this. But you can rub it, and of course, and then you can wait, and of course, bzz, you give a place for all the electrons to go. Okay, so this was charging by friction. And what happened, of course, the important thing to know about charging by friction is that the two materials ended up with opposite charge. That's important. Okay, let's look at charging by contact. So this time we're going to have two different materials. Let's say one of them is negative. Let's say it's a metal rod or something like that. And then we've got an uncharged one. Now, why is this one here uh, negative? In this case, it's because it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's got 12 negative ones, but it's only got 6 positive. So that's why it's overall it's negative. And this one here is even number, so there we go. Now, what happens is this. As you bring them together in step 2, as they touch, what's going to happen? Well, 
these extra electrons right here then are going to be able to go, let's say, to the right. So let's uh, maybe then they'll go um, these ones right here. Let's say these extra six. Maybe some of the electrons right here. Whoops, I better draw it in blue instead. I like to do it that way. The electrons are going to go that way. In other words, maybe, maybe you know, there's there's six extra ones. So maybe three of them will stay here. So one, two, three. But maybe three of them then will go over here. Well, that means that I've got, you know, my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine original ones uh, here, at least. And this one here has my one, two, three, four, five, six. And this one here also gained three extra ones like this. So now if you look at this, this is the, still the same number of electrons as we had before. So what happens is this then, this one overall, do you notice? It has a negative charge still. It's just less negative. And this one right here used to be neutral. It's also negative because right? it's got more electrons than it started with. And it's got more than it has positives. So the trick is here for charging by contact is that the both of them uh, end up with the same charge. Do you notice they both end up with negative in this case? Well, let's talk about grounding, or sometimes called earthing. So this is going to allow the electrons to go into the earth with a direct connection. So let's say we have something that's charged initially, it's negative, for example, there's more negatives than there are positives. And what we do is we hook this thing up, we literally just connect it to the ground. I mean, so this is actually the symbol we use for it. I like this in here, how they used actual dirt, because <laughs> it's supposed to be ground, uh -huh, or earthing. But what happens is this, if there's an overabundance, or if there's a reason for them to go down, the electrons can actually go down this way. So in other words, these electrons are all going to go down this way, and they're all going to go wee into the ground, so then this thing will end up probably positively charged. Okay, last but not least is going to be charging by induction. Induction is where, crucially here, they don't actually touch. Okay, they're not actually going to touch these two objects here. So we've got, a, let's say, a sphere uh, that's initially uncharged, so in other words, it's just neutral, and then we've got a rod that's negatively charged. Okay, so this is the initial situation, and let's count the electrons. One, two, three, four, five. We've got six electrons here. Now, they're not actually going to touch, but what we're going to do is we're going to bring them close. So when this one right here in step two, when this rod gets close without actually touching, what do you think is going to happen to those electrons that can move around? Well, they're going to be repelled by these lots of electrons. So does it make sense? A lot of them are going to want to move away. So maybe a one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to have all the electrons sort of move over to this end. All right, fine. So what? Well, then I hook this up to the ground. So now I actually earth it or ground it like this. Why do I do that? Because that allows these electrons that are being repelled by this uh, rod, they're actually able to go somewhere to really get away. So that means all six of them then are going to go off of this way. Here, see, the electrons will go this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say let's say they all just go down. Well, then in the end, then you disconnect the ground, and then you end up with this. With all your electrons disappeared, your electrons went to the ground. So now, what's the charge of this one? This one is now positively charged. And then you move the rod away, and there you go. So all you have to do is move the rod close and allow a place for those electrons to go away because they're being repelled by the rod. And then you can move the rod back away again. And look, you've charged this sphere without ever touching it. So that's why uh, when we charge by induction, those two materials will have opposite charge. There we go. Those are the three things. Okay, So it was charging by friction, by contact, and by induction.